Good morning. Mr. President, I have the honor to make this statement on behalf of the A3 plus one, namely Kenya, Tunisia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Niger. I thank the Secretary General for his briefing on the latest developments in Afghanistan. Uh, the A3 plus one reiterates its support for the stabilization efforts deployed by the UN in the search for a durable solution to the Afghan crisis, which has been developing in warring ways in the past few days. Mr. President, this meeting comes on the heels of a similar meeting we held on the 6th of this month. If at that time we still harbored hope, as slim as that might have been, for the Taliban to heed our appeal and stop their attacks, today we're faced with a fate accompli with the effective collapse of the Afghan government and a takeover by the insurgents. The A3 plus one deplores the violence, human rights abuses, and the loss of life, and the suffering endured by the civilian population who were forced to leave their areas because of the latest combat all over the country. We reiterate our call for an immediate end to the hostilities. We reiterate our principal rejection for any seizure, seizure of power by force and call for the establishment of an effective dialogue, convinced that the only viable solution to this conflict is a negotiated political settlement. We take note of the discussions between the Taliban and the different Afghan stakeholders. We hope that these negotiations will result in an interim transitional government that would be inclusive and take into account other political voices within the country. We also urge the international community and all regional powers that have leverage on the warring parties to use that influence and advocate for a lasting ceasefire. Condition, uh, which is a condition for true dialogue. Mr. President, while it is difficult to predict how the coming days, months, or years will unfold, in particular with regard to the political and security situations, one thing that remains for certain is that Afghanistan is on the brink of a humanitarian catastrophe, catastrophe of which the first victims are women and children. The A3 plus one would therefore like to highlight the importance of finding an urgent and sustainable solution to the already dire humanitarian crisis, which has been worsened by the recent fighting. The effects of the recent upsurge of violence combined with those of climate change and the COVID-19 pandemic have created a situation where more than a third of the population is experiencing food insecurity and thousands are internally displaced, the overwhelming majority being women and children. We call for the United Nations and the humanitarian agencies to step up their support to the displaced populations and honor the pledges made to the Afghan humanitarian plan. Mr. President, the Afghan people now, more than ever, need the support and solidarity of the international community and regional players to help them navigate this challenging time. Every effort must be made to mitigate the pains of the civil war and to assist them in their search for peace and a stable environment conducive to the pursuit of democratic governance as well as social and economic well-being. The A3 plus one continue to welcome and fully support the good offices of the United Nations and all other diplomatic efforts by neighboring countries to reduce tension in order to reach a negotiated solution to the crisis. Furthermore, we emphasize that the search for peace must not be at the expense of Afghan human rights, particularly those of women, children, and Afghanistan's ethnic and religious minorities. While making peace requires settlement between combatants, we believe that the international community does not wish for peace processes to reward and legitimize the use of military interventions and association with terrorist organizations through political recognition. We recall how the Taliban came to be thrown out of power because of their support of Al-Qaeda. Reports of the release of prisoners affiliated to ISIS and Al-Qaeda by the Taliban are extremely disturbing. Such actions will embolden terrorist networks and motivate a resurgence of increased export of terrorism, particularly to countries in regions that have active conflict situations. In its statement of the 6th of August, the A3 plus one recalled this council's decision to split the Al-Qaeda and Taliban sanction lists in response to efforts by the Afghan government to negotiate a peace process with the Taliban that would lead to national reconciliation in Afghanistan. 
The purpose of this decision was to provide a future lifeline for members of the Taliban that renounce violence and disassociate themselves from Al-Qaeda. Therefore, the Council must not relent in its demand that the Taliban make sustained efforts to embrace peace, cease its links with Al-Qaeda and ISIS, and engage in the peace process that will transform Afghanistan to a net exporter of peace. As we conclude, Mr. President, the A3 plus one notes that the situation in Afghanistan is extremely volatile and unpredictable. Armed insurgent groups and terrorist groups across the world are watching closely in order to replicate the unraveling events. This council must therefore carefully consider the decisions it makes, fully aware that building political tracks for entities using terrorism to achieve political ends will in the end be counterproductive. Finally, Kenya, Tunisia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Niger reaffirm their unwavering solidarity with the people of Afghanistan during these uncertain times and reaffirm our support for their vision for a peaceful and progressive country. I thank you for your attention.